Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. For today's Makeup Monday video, I'm getting ready for the day while testing out a few new products, including the new Chanel primer. This is the La Boss Illuminatrice Glowing Makeup Primer. It's moisturizing and plumping. A very exciting new launch from Chanel because besides the Sublimage Primer, it's been a while since they brought out a new formula, but they've discontinued several others. If you remember the Rosé and the Mimosa Primers, I think those have been long gone. The base Lumiere says sold out. Let's see. Right now, it looks like the only options are the Le Beige Sheer Healthy Glow Highlighting Fluids, LeBlanc Rosy Light Drops, the Sublimage Le Swan Perfector, which I love, and LeBlanc de Chanel, which has been around for a very long time. When I first started at the Chanel counter years ago, that was, I believe, one of two primers. It's very illuminating, very brightening. So. I only recommend it for somebody with light skin or if you like a lot of luminosity. It was sold out for such a long time, I thought it was discontinued, but I guess it's back in stock. You can add it to your shopping cart if you're interested. The new primer retails for $48. It preps for foundation application and provides instant radiance. Skin has a lit from within glow and is ready for makeup and stays fresh for up to 12 hours. It features a Hydro Protect complex that combines hydration and protection. It's infused with hyaluronic acid to keep the skin plumped and moisturized throughout the day. It's enriched with blue microalgae, which is known for its antioxidant benefits. Red algae, it also contains light reflecting pearlescent particles and blurring powders to even out the skin texture. So right off the bat, this looks like the CC cream. I love the convenience of the squeezy tube packaging. It feels really nice. It feels like kind of a gel cream, very lightweight, almost looks a little pinky pearlescent, but then as soon as you blend it out, you can't really see a ton of color. Can't really tell that there's a lot of blurring going on. I do see a little radiance and it feels very hydrating. And the smell. It's not too strong, I don't mind it. If you're sensitive to fragrance, you might not like this primer, but as long as you're okay with the typical Chanel Beauty fragrance, I think you will be fine with it. It looks really nice. More than anything, I notice a lot of hydration, more so than luminosity. It reminds me a little bit of the Sublimage primer, which is, what, four times more expensive, so I kinda wanna compare on this hand. This is the Sublimage Le Swan Perfector Illuminating Primer. I just did one pump on this hand, and you can see it's kind of creamy, very pearlescent, and it has more of a champagne glow, but not all that dissimilar to this new primer. This smell is a bit different. This smells like the rest of the Sublimage skincare line. Also feels very hydrating feels plumping and there's a little luminosity, but once you rub it into the hand, it's so subtle that it actually looks very similar to the new primer. I really like the feel of both of these products. I love the fact that this contains skincare, but this also contains skincare ingredients. It has antioxidants, hyaluronic acid. They both have luminosity to them. So I kind of think this is a really great deal for a fraction of the cost of the Sublimage. The packaging isn't nearly as beautiful, and I will say that the Twist and Pump does come with two refills, so it's not just the one product. You also have two backups as well. So you get quite a bit of product, actually, in the Sublimage. I'm still not sure you can really justify it, but let's go ahead and see what this feels like on the face. The only thing I have on right now is moisturizer, and I'm just going to start in the center points of the face and blend out. It feels really creamy and smooth, but it doesn't feel really thick, which I really like. Ooh, look at that glow. I really like it. I like the look that it gives the skin. Typically, illuminating products from Chanel are very subtle, but I imagine if you wanted just a teeny tiny bit of glow or maybe you wanted to sheer out a heavier foundation, you could probably mix this in directly to your foundation. You can kind of create your own luminous tinted moisturizer if you wanted to. And it does feel very plumping. 
Reminds me a bit of the Super Goop Glow Screen, which I love. I use almost every single day. I take it everywhere with me. The good thing about the Super Goop Glow Screen is that it has SPF 40. This does not have SPF, so it would probably be best for evenings, weekends, when the sun is already down. For today's makeup look, I'm going for something much softer than last week, so this is going to be more of a light and natural everyday look. I have two other new products. My Huda Beauty Powder arrived. This is the Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder in the shade Cherry Blossom. I have had my eyes on this powder for such a long time and then it finally came back in stock and it immediately sold out, but not before I could get my hands on one. And finally, I will be doing a full tutorial, both eyes using the Tweed 02 palette. This is the pinky purple. It's much softer, more in line with the LeBlanc makeup collection that we usually see during springtime from Chanel. For foundation today, I pulled out my number one de Chanel because it has been a while since I've worn this and I need to refresh my memory, but I know it has a very natural finish and coverage and I always wear shade B30 in Chanel foundations. I took one pump on the back of my hand and I am going in with the least amount of product I can get away with. I don't want to jinx myself, but my skin has been pretty clear lately. I want to make sure I can still see my freckles and see my skin shining through. That's not bad. One pump covered the entire bottom part of my face. I need a little bit more for the forehead, but I think it looks really good. I can still see my freckles and it doesn't look completely even. Definitely doesn't look cakey, but I can still see that glow shining through from the primer as well. Just doing a little bit more on my forehead and then I am going to bring this down my neck just a little bit. And I might have a little redness on my cheeks because it's been sort of a stressful afternoon. I posted my fall fragrance campaign video with Sephora. And then about an hour later, I noticed that my Instagram was acting funny. I tried to log back in and it said, your account has been suspended, bum bum bum, with this ominous text like, suspended. I was so shocked, I don't know why. So I feel like it must have been a glitch or a mistake. I don't want anybody to think I blocked them. It's not that I blocked you. I still love you. I just no longer exist on Instagram for the moment. So hopefully that will be fixed. I appealed the suspension and I'm supposed to hear back within 24 hours. So we'll see. For concealer, I'm gonna use the new Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin. This has become one of my favorite concealers. I'm gonna use just a teeny tiny bit it has, I would say, medium to full coverage. It's not super full. It's definitely not as full coverage as the Huda Beauty, the new one that I tried last week. But I also really like the finish, and it doesn't crease. I'm not too stressed about the Instagram situation. I feel like, as an app, Instagram has been incredibly glitchy. They're always kind of making changes. I'll be sad if my account disappears forever, but I just don't feel like that's gonna happen. I'm certainly not going to let it ruin my weekend. I feel bad that I just posted a campaign for Sephora though. And it was a good one, fall fragrance. <laughs> Do you see how smooth that looks? My skin is very dry at the moment because I've been using my retinol. I did mention I was using my retinol for a while. I've since stopped and I haven't used it in several nights, but I'm still kind of peeling all over my face. So I'm taking that into consideration, but my under eye still looks nice and smooth. And I still have some glassiness, some radiance from the primer as well. I'm gonna go ahead and very lightly set my face using this new setting powder. And I've been messing it up. It's Cherry Blossom Cake. I thought it was just Cherry Blossom, but it's Cherry Blossom Cake. I'm really interested to smell it and see just how intense the fragrance is. That is the one complaint I hear about, ooh, about this powder. Ooh, be careful. Yeah, it's that same fragrance. I thought maybe it would smell like Cherry Blossom. This is the pink powder I've been using. It's pressed, which is very convenient. 
and you can see it's basically the same shade of pink I think this might be a little bit more of a bubblegum pink this is more of a pinky white a pinky pearl this is also matte but it goes on and it looks pretty white what I like about the idea of a light pink setting powder is that it will give you a brightness, just kind of an ethereal glow, a very bridal, angelic look to your makeup when you use it to set your concealer. It's not intended to be pink pink, like a blush, but just very, very slightly pink. The trends come and go so quickly, but I remember seeing at least a couple weeks ago now on TikTok, there was a viral trend of people applying their blush and blending it up all the way underneath the eye or also mixing a little liquid blush into their concealer to give a slightly pink effect. And it's the same thing. It's not necessarily meant to color correct. That is not the purpose. This is just meant to give like just a little extra blush. It's a very specific makeup style. Some people will really like it. Other people will probably hate it, but I think it looks very pretty. It's very springtime, but I think even going into winter, this is very like snow angel, beautiful wintry, Elsa, frozen goddess makeup. That's what I'm hoping to achieve, but let's see if it's pink enough. I tapped off as much excess as I possibly could. You know what? I think it is. So pretty. I love it. I think this is perfect. There's also a pink powder from Ben Nye, one of you told me about, and I looked it up. I haven't purchased it yet, but I want to. It looks pretty pink, maybe a little bit more pink than this one. It's very subtle, and that's a good thing, but it will just kind of enhance the rosiness of the makeup, and I think once we do the eyes, the cheek, it should help tie everything in together. The powder itself is amazing, though. I really, really love the Huda Beauty setting powder. It's so finely milled, you cannot see it at all on the skin. It's so blurring. It does a great job setting the makeup, but it's matte, flat matte which I like, especially under the eye, but right here on the cheeks. I'm gonna set the center of the forehead and the chin as well, just because those areas were a little shiny. I almost wish I had done one side Westman Atelier, one side Huda Beauty, so I could compare, but I didn't wanna mess up the makeup. I just wanted to see the full look, but in the future, I would like to see what they look like on the face. I'll go ahead and swatch them. I'm not sure it will really tell us anything. Westman Atelier, Cherry Blossom Cake. Now that I see them side by side, I don't think there's a difference between them. I thought maybe just looking at it in the jar, it looked a little bit more pink, but if there's no noticeable shade difference here when they're really built up, there's definitely not going to be a noticeable shade difference on the face. I accidentally went out of order. I hope I don't regret this. To warm up my complexion, I pulled out my Le Beige 392 Sole Tan Medium Bronze Cream Bronzer. I usually like to do all of my cream products before I powder, but we're gonna try it. Because we have a lighter makeup today, hopefully this will work. I'm going in with this Laura Geller Foundation Brush, and I'm just very lightly going to stipple this around the usual areas. I'm going for more Snow Queen than Bronze Goddess, but I still need a little warmth. If nothing else, so my face doesn't look so flat and one-dimensional. Oh yeah, that's work working perfectly. This is the first time I've sat down to film since we dealt with Hurricane Ian and the videos and images coming out of the Fort Myers area are heartbreaking. This was one of the worst storms to hit South Florida. It's absolutely devastating. We got so lucky. We did lose power for a couple hours in the morning, um, but it came on by the afternoon. The weather looked very grim, 
and there was a tornado north of us, but luckily we didn't have any major damage. There's really no major damage in our area, our neighborhood. We didn't have any street flooding, which we usually don't. During really bad storms, even just like a normal storm, there are certain neighborhoods that will flood. They just have draining issues and they're close to the water. But where we are, it's a little bit higher, so... But there are a lot of trees, so power going out, we kind of expected that it might happen, and it did. Tampa seems to have been spared. My parents' house had a lot of tree limbs down, which they usually do because there are a ton of oak trees everywhere. So they had a ton of branches, nothing fell on the house, it's already cleaned up. They got so lucky and you don't really realize how lucky you are until you see the video of the people who had the direct hit. Some people lost everything and it is still so early. It's gonna take time for the water to recede, for the power to come back on. There is just an overwhelming amount of damage, but I'm gonna be keeping my eyes out for ways to help in the next few weeks. For blush, I'm gonna use one of my new favorites. This is from Gucci. I picked up the shade 03 Radiant Pink. I love the texture, I love the finish, and this is just such a happy color. It gives the most beautiful flush to the cheeks. The perfect highlighter for this look is the Westman Atelier Peau de Rose. This is such a beautiful pale pink highlight. It's one of my favorites, as you can see. I have not only hit pan, but I am starting to kind of circle the drain a little bit. I am convinced that I can finish this before the end of the year. I keep it in the top drawer. I use it almost every single day, so I don't see why not. And I love to tap a little bit on the chin above the brow bone. I find that the more places you apply highlighter, the more natural it looks. And if you wanna soften it, you can even go back with a powder brush apply a little bit of powder or just take the excess from your brush and just kind of dust it on top of the highlight so that it's peeking through. Once I've applied, I'm going to go back and just blend right on top. I'm not using my powder brush and I didn't apply any powder, but I find that if I go back with a foundation brush, this is the Sephora Pro 56, and just kind of help blend sort of melts into the makeup a little bit better so it looks more natural. Complexion is done. We're moving on to the eyes. So I am pulling out my O2 Tweed Eyeshadow Palette from Chanel. I have a rougher 14 fluffy brush and I am going to, I wanna make sure I do something different than my initial review. What am I gonna do? You know, why don't we try kind of a halo eye? We might as well. So I'm going to go in this shade right here in the top corner. Instead of going in the crease, I'm going to lightly apply this to the inner lid. Keeping it pretty soft. Now I'm taking the same shade and I'm going on the outer bit of the lid and I'm trying to keep as much blank space in the middle as possible. And then I am going to extend out a little bit. I'm kind of keeping it low in the crease, outer V, extending a teeny tiny bit. I'm going to lean in so you can see. We haven't blended anything out yet, but you can see inner lid, outer lid, keeping the center as clean as possible. So now I'm applying to the outer lid, outer V. Using my finger, I'm gonna pick up the pink eyeshadow and I am going to pop that in the center of the lid. So pretty, see this really lightens the eye look. Even though it's very purple and plummy, I just find these colors to look extremely wearable on the eye. With a blank fluffy brush, 
I'm just going to blend right on top of the crease. So now the only Tweed palette I haven't done a complete eye look yet with is the orangey palette, the really warm one. I believe it's called Fauve. So that will be next. I picked up a pencil brush and for the sake of using a different shade, I don't really think it would matter. I'm going into this shadow down here. You could do either one. Definitely don't want to do the deeper shade, but I'll go here and I'm going to mirror the top. So I'm going to take a little bit of this on the outer lower lash line, a teeny tiny bit on the inner lash line, but I'm going to keep the middle blank so that I can apply the pink. I'm back. I quickly filled in my eyebrows off camera. I also touched up my powder. So now the complexion is looking great. And I pulled out this House Labs Optic Intensity Eco Liner in the shade Deep Bronze Shimmer. I'm not going to do this in the waterline. Instead, I'm going to do this eyeliner on the top lash line, but I'm not going to take it all of the way in. I'm really going to concentrate on the outer lash line. I might wing it out a teeny tiny bit but I want to keep the eyeliner pretty soft. So I'm starting about halfway in. I think that's all you need. It kind of defines the eye a little bit, but it doesn't look heavy. Same thing on the other side. It's pretty creamy, which I really like, so it doesn't drag across the lash line and create like a choppy line. So I'm not worried about creating a wing, just kind of extending it a teeny tiny bit. I'm using this Makeup Forever Professional and I think today I'm going to skip step two and I'm just going to do step one. Last step for the eyes, I picked up a little precision brush and I just feel like I cannot skip my inner corner highlight. So I am dipping into the cream highlighter and I am just going to pop a little bit of that on the inner corner of the eye. And it ties in so nicely with the eyeshadow. Since the eyeshadow is pretty soft, I kind of want to do a pink lip. I don't know if this is gonna, going to be too dark. This is the Rouge Allure Ink Fusion in Pink Brown. It's a really nice fall pink. We'll try it out and see. Such a pretty color. And these are so thin. I kind of want to keep it a little bit softer. I don't want it to necessarily look smudgy, but I'm using my fingers to help blend so that I don't layer too much product because it is a liquid lipstick and as it dries, it's going to get very matte and sometimes you can layer too much by accident because it's so thin. So I wanna keep it like that, I think. One thing about me, I am an absolute baby when it comes to dry lips. That's why you never see me wearing just a matte lipstick with nothing on top. So I am going to apply a little bit of this Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. Just to give them a little hydration. A little shine. 
shine as well. Ugh, they feel so nice now. This is perfect. I think that is the key to go in with a teeny tiny bit of those Rouge Allure inks, blot it out with your finger, and then top with the lip, lip mask. Most everything you've already seen, but let's quickly talk about the three new products that I tested today. Starting with this new primer from Chanel, La Boss Illuminatrice Glowing Makeup Primer. I really like it. I think for $48 versus the 200 something, I want to say maybe 240 for the Sublimage Primer, this is a much better value. I mean, it hydrates, it has antioxidants, it has a luminosity to it, and it's going to grip the foundation. I consider myself to have a normal skin type. I do still get oily in the T-zone, especially on my chin, if I'm out for an extended period of time and I live in a humid climate. I think this is amazing for all skin types. Even if you have really oily skin, well, if you have really, really oily skin, you're not looking for a hydrating primer. But if you still get oily sometimes, but you like a little glow, this does not feel oily. It's more of a hydrating gel. It truly reminds me of the primer that would align with the Hydra Beauty skincare line from Chanel, if you're familiar with that. Feels really amazing, doesn't feel heavy, doesn't feel greasy. I didn't feel like I was, you know, adding another thick layer beneath my foundation. So this I give 10 out of 10. This Huda Beauty Cherry Blossom Cake Easy Bake Powder, I like it. I'm happy I purchased this. It's basically a loose version of the Westman Atelier. I was hoping it would be a little bit more pink, slightly more pink. I still am really happy with it because I love this formula. The powder formula is amazing, so great. I already have the banana bread, but I was looking for something a little bit more brightening. And I think it does give me some brightness. I don't have the rosy ethereal glow from the powder that I was looking for. That just means that my hunt is not over. I did not make this product up. It's not something that I've just dreamed of. I feel like it does exist out there and I just need to pinpoint the right brand. And last but not least, the Tweed O2 palette. I'm not even going to attempt to say the shade. My French is Trey Mal. It's very bad. I love these colors. I think it's soft. It's pretty. It's nice and versatile. It's not going to give you a ton of range because this is just meant to give you a softer look overall, but if that's your makeup style, then I think you'll be really happy with this palette. I was not nearly as disappointed as I thought. Maybe the expectation was so low that I could only be impressed, but I am impressed. I think the colors look really nice. If you are kind of considering this palette and you love these colors, you don't already have something like it in your collection, then maybe spring for it because you do get the limited edition tweed pouch. Otherwise, there are always palettes in this color story from Chanel. Almost every spring, every year during spring, we see something similar. I want to say there are a couple palettes in existence that Chanel always carries that are pinks and purples, so you could save the money because $88 for an eyeshadow quad is steep. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.